Yeah! What's going on, guys? Today we're lowering Steven's F-150. Get pumped up, baby. Let's go! <laughs> Steven, tell them what we're doing today. All right, so today we are lowering the F-150. Uh, I went with an IHC 3.5 lowering kit for a four-wheel drive. And uh, so with that kit, it's gonna be upper and lower control arms on passenger and driver front. And then for the rear, we'll do a flip kit with new shocks and lift shackles. So let's get to it. All right, guys, starting off, I'm gonna go ahead and measure my ride height from the uh, center of the wheel to the uh, wheel well. Fuck, are we keeping that? Oh, oh brother. And that looked about 22 inches there for the front. And let's make it over here. So, and that's about 25. For the rear. So 22 in the front, 20, yeah, 22 in the front, rear. 22 in the rear, or 25. 25 in the rear. All right. So let's get it on the lift and get everything taken apart. All right, so starting off, we're gonna do the front. Uh, I will be replacing upper and con lower control arms. Uh, we'll have to take all the brakes off, the steering knuckle. Uh, just basically take it apart. Get all these hoses loose and out of the way. So let's get at it. Wheel speed sensor out of the way. Yep, took the wheel speed sensor out of the way. So I'll have to take my take this little cap off. There should be a little nut inside here that I gotta take off for the uh, CV axle four-wheel drive coupler. So I'll have to take all that off as well. I take my airline off here for my coupler. Get that out of the way. Got it. That popped out pretty easy. He just yeah. used a screwdriver. Screwdriver, hammer. Just kind of tap it around the edge until you pop that off. And there's just going to be this little nut. All right, so once you get that nut off, uh, that will free up the CV axle to come out. So what we'll do next is go ahead and take the tie rod end off. Uh, the sway bar link and then my upper and lower ball joint nuts so let's get to that of course different size I'm gonna have to uh, hold it up here and then try to take the nut off. 
All day. Easies in the chat. If you're having trouble with your sway bar in like that, like he just held a pair of pliers right there. Try not to mess up your bushing. Obviously, you don't want to grab a hold of the rubber and then you'll chew it up and you'll have to replace it. Uh, obviously, if it's really stuck, you could just put new sway bar links in, but that's all up to you. Uh, go ahead and thread this back on. Just a couple threads there, so if this drops, it won't fall and smash my foot. Same thing here, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it threaded on a couple of threads. Now it's a matter of popping it out of this joint and down here so I can get the whole knuckle off. Just like that, and then it popped free. I'm gonna do the same thing down here. Oh, well, all that beating on that lower ball joint did break it loose. So, this was just had enough tension that it was holding this up, keeping this from popping free. So, and then be careful with this, because you, if you are four wheel drive like I am, you don't want to mess up your coupler here with the end of your snout, your CV snout. It auto focuses uh, Bam, close. just like that. So then that will give us access to both of the control arms. So just set this off to the side. Because we're done with that. We are going to have to take the strut assembly out to get access to the bolts for the upper control arm. Uh, so the strut is three nuts up top. Which here's one. And then uh, you got the two nuts on the bottom. So that's going to be my next step. Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin'. If you ever want to. Cold brew, mocha, cream, sugar. Please. Dunkin'. Fire. Sponsor of Brownless Vlog. Tell us, David. Sponsor. Sponsor. Sponsor of Brownless Vlog. Dunkin' Donuts. Let's go. There's all three of those. way to do this <laughs> I actually think since I'm taking the lower control arm off anyway go ahead I'm gonna go ahead and loosen these that way this control arm swings down and I can just this thing will flop right out of here yeah instead of flop. flying that <laughs> bada bing bada boom and do the same for the other side. Okay. okay, that's kind of what I was going to do. And you're clueless. Yeah. I got over on the strap. Yeah, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Is that? So we're going to throw this to the side. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and Continue taking these bolts out and take the lower control arm off. And then we'll take the uppers off with these two bolts ran through here. And then we'll be ready to install the new ones. Can't tell me he's bringing a superstar today. Superstar. This leaky air hose. No. <laughs>
Now we're taking the upper off. Like I said, it's just this bolt and nut. So we'll do that now. so far yeah so now that is both uppers and lowers off Michael finished taking off that other upper <laughs> he doesn't want to be on camera Michael don't want to be on camera so uh, this is obviously the new hardware the upper ball joints do not come installed so you will it'll be in a bag with the bolts nuts um, I threw some Loctite on them and went ahead and pre-installed this uh, it does come with grease circs on everything, so whenever this is all installed, you'll want to install grease in everything. The, on the instructions that they provide, they want you to add a little bit of grease to each side of this, or else it will squeak whenever installed. Whenever the control arm moves up and down, it will cause some noise. Uh, as far as the lowers, they come already installed, the ball joint does, so you don't have to mess with that. Uh, they also have grease circs on the best back sides. So all of that will need to be greased when it once installed. So. Again, guys, if y'all are curious, the kit he is using, we will link it in the description box down below. Yeah, the, I went with this kit because with the control arms, you don't have to modify your lower subframe to get the alignment correct going this low uh, i'll walk over to the truck and show you these little notches here for your camber adjustment you'll actually move the control arm in and out if you were to use the stock control arms and trying to go this low you would have to actually grind this out to get your alignment right with these aftermarket control arms i won't have to do that so let's get back to installing everything Something I just talked about and forgot to do is add some grease. But uh, I will be. Right, right. <laughs> I will be reusing the hardware. So if yours is like rusted or comes apart hard, I'd probably recommend replacing it. But mine's all fairly new. Like all my hardware looks pretty good. Extra fresh. So I'm just going to reuse all mine. And then obviously, I better go get some grease before I forget again. Grease. Now you'll want to leave these loose before you tighten them. Because technically, once you get the upper and lower and knuckle back on, you want to leave everything loose. Get something to put underneath the lower control arm. Push the vehicle up to about ride height and then tighten everything so you're not putting your bushings in a bind. Now, if you know about approximately where your control arm's gonna sit stock or on the ground, you could go ahead and tighten everything up beforehand. But I'm gonna go ahead and leave it loose. All right, same way on the lower control arm, add a little grease to the ends and I push it up in here. On their install kit instructions, they're saying you can tap these out a little bit if you're struggling to get the arm in I haven't done that yet, so we'll see how it goes.
What are you doing now, Steven? I am going to go ahead and tap these out. It's just, it's just <laughs> fighting me. All right, Steven, tell them the problem we just ran into. Well, I was just lifting the control arm just to see. Uh, this sway bar link hole, the hole that is pre-drilled, actually doesn't fit the sway bar. So what we'll have to do is go ahead and drill that out a little bit. It's an easy fix, just a little annoying. So nothing major yet. Let's get on with it. Got me myself a little bigger drill bit. It's like a glove. So that, so that was literally like a 10 second fix though. Right. What I feel like happened is they made it the exact size and then they powder coated it and that filled in some of the gap. So really easy fix. I didn't have to take off much. Just get you a little slightly bigger drill bit. Maybe you could probably even fix it with a file. If you don't have access to a drill bit, just file it out. But easy, easy, easy's in the chat. All right, so the same way with the strut, uh, I left the studs in. I know their instructions say cut it off and they come with new bolts. I didn't get new bolts. So I don't know if they forgot to put them in the kit or what, but the strut holes, the bolts don't fit. Kind of like the same way that the sway bar link. So I'm gonna grab that uh, drill bit and drill those out again and see if this fits. There we go. Uh, be enough. Off camera, if you are worried about rust, uh, I am applying a little bit of paint in here to help prevent the rust. So, just take note. If you have to do this, you might want to recoat it so it does not rust and rust out your uh, lower control arm. <laughs> All day. Did you see it? Were you recording that? Mm -hmm. In like butter. Okay, slider up in there. Grab my nuts. Oh. It's all of what she said. Joey? <laughs> it's your boy Stove. Back at Back at you again. Okay. Now, uh, how this is still loose and the strut's still in here, I will have to make sure whatever I'm using, I can get in here and tighten this down. Because what you, like I was saying earlier, you'll want to put pressure and try to set this about where it will set at ride height. So I feel like right there is pretty good. I'm half tempted to just go ahead and tighten it down anyway. Uh, let's tighten up these, my strut. I need this game to be good though. Michael got some nickelback knees. <laughs> yeah, I like dirt. What's on your knees? I like the way you still say please if we're going to look at You're my favorite type of shoes. Torque to spec, you know. Shame we can't get an impact on and give us some ugga duggas. Yeah. We're giving it the old He Man type down. We Man. Just for Megan. Not me grunting. Such a strong, handsome man. <laughs> Alright. Uh, so, what I'm going to do. I'm gonna 
sway from the instructions. And I'm going to put this control arm where I think it's going to be. I'm going to go ahead and grease up these top zerks. Put it up where I think it's going to be. Tighten it down. So I don't got to fight with it later. Oh, I missed it. All right, so I went ahead and held this up and then tightened these down. It's not technically the right procedure, but hey, it should work. Um, I still got to remember to grease this ball joint before I put it all 100% back together. Then on the lower, these are less important to tighten all the way down because once I get the tires on it and I have it on the alignment rack, I'm going to have to loosen these up to set the alignment anyway. So I'm just going to kind of run them in not pinch them down but just make sure that it's on there so it don't fall off while i move it uh obviously i still got to tighten up my lower strut sway bar and then it's going to be on to putting the knuckle on so i'm going to take an off castle nut off this and this so i got this tightened down to where it should be about uh ride height stock whatever you want to call it uh i still need to tighten down my sway bar and my lower strut, so I'm gonna do that now. If I remember what I do with my tools. All right, once you get those tightened, you can go ahead and put the steering knuckle back on. Uh, you could go ahead and pre-fill this with a little grease as well. So, now with this, you wanna be careful with your CV axle in. Make sure you get it in here without damaging your four-wheel drive coupler. Obviously, if you're working on two-wheel drive, you won't have that issue. Yeah, Steven, most people don't lower their four-wheel drives. Amen. Well, Steven is not lower than that. I dig it, though. Nice Eminem quote to live by. God sent me here to piss the world off. Oh, hard ass, huh? Who's Oh, hairbrush gang. Hairbrush showed me the way. Tough as the hairbrush handle is what right, I so always Once that's says. through, I hand tighten the nut to hold it. And then I gotta get this down here or up, whatever. How did you get yours up there? <laughs> I don't think he tightened it all the way. How did you get side. what to what? This all the way up there. That just comes down. Oh, wow. I knew when you tightened that up, I was like, he's got four. <laughs> that slid down that easy? Yeah, well, I mean, you got a full heart. Retorque it when it's on the ground. It was always walking around. Yeah, we can always retighten it. So, double on that boy up. Is that how it goes? Yeah, uh, they in the kit they supply the two washers here because if you don't use these, it will not pull the ball joint down into the knuckle far enough, and you'll have some play. So make sure you use the two washers that are provided. <laughs> and you don't. You don't put one of these up here. You put them right. both here. Correct. Right? Okay. Correct. Let's see what he does. See, I would have tried. I would have tried to put one on top, one on yeah, the bottom. Yeah, no. So, no, they both go on the bottom. So, I do want to make a note on this four-wheel drive coupler. If you can see, they had some blue Loctite. Uh, you do want to apply more of that whenever you go back together, so this does not come off. So, apply it then. And yes, blue Loctite is in a red container, medium strength, blue. Don't look at the container, container is red. So, take it out. 
put your little dab and then you screw her on not by hand of course Let's go down to the bottom one. Try that washer. <laughs> Try that washer. Let's go on the bottom. All right, Steven. All right, so. All right, I'll hose. disconnect the air hose. All right, um, so. Both of these washers were with this whenever I got it. But after tightening this lower ball joint, the cotter pin's way off. So what I'm going to do is take one washer and only put one washer up here and put another washer down here so cut so right. leave the two on top update number six thousand on these washers all right you you rolling yes all right so update number three on the washer situation so taking these off uh you can see where the ball joint pulls through and there's no threads left so you'll need at least one to pull the ball joint all the way through. Well, with just one, the uh, castle nut is doing what the lower is doing, where it draws up too high, and you can't, the cotter pin doesn't hold the castle nut. So what I am going to do is leave the two up top, and then I'm gonna go over here to the store and grab an extra washer for the bottom on each side, and uh, that way the cotter pin will hold the actual castle nut. All right, now that Corey's done making noise, we can go on. Uh, I did go over here to the store. I picked up four 5 8 washers. They're about yay thick. Because uh, with one, it still wasn't deep enough for the cotter pins to actually go through the castle nut. So with both of these on, and you spin this down. Granted, I've already tightened the ball joint once, so it's already clamped into place. But as you can see there, the cotter pin will be able to go through and actually hold the castle nut. So I'm gonna tighten that down, run my cotter pins in, uh, tighten my um, tie rod end, and then it's back with putting the brakes on and hooking up all my vacuum lines and stuff. And the front will be pretty much done other than tightening these down, which like I said, uh, we'll do whenever I do the alignment. Just make sure they are tight enough that you can move it to the alignment. Here, I don't have to drive the truck anywhere. I got the alignment machine right behind us. Boom. Um, thanks to Ryan Hanaway for leaving a car on there. Appreciate that, um, hey, brothers. <laughs> so yeah, let's get to wrapping this front end up and then we'll go back to the back and start doing the flip. The cameraman can help sometimes. All right, so that's it for the front. Obviously, you're gonna put the wheel back on, put it on the ground. Make sure everything's tight if you are need to drive it to get an alignment. Uh, and then after this, we're on to the rear. 